Hello, this is Brandon Haston with Pseudo Game Dev. This is part 5 of our Let's Make a Game with Unity 4 series. And today I'm going to be covering physics in Unity and collision meshes because I was asked a day or two ago if Blender automatically created collision meshes based off of the blend models that we brought into Unity. And the answer is sort of. I feel this is important to cover because in my last video I mentioned that this video was going to be about bringing a character into the game. But if I don't have a collision mesh assigned to my bridge, my character would just fall right through it and that makes for a very useless kind of a world for a character to be in. So moving on, I mentioned that Unity sort of automatically creates a collision mesh for our objects. And I say this because while it doesn't assign one to our mesh, we can select one of our mesh objects in our bridge prefab. And I've already added it here, so I'm just going to delete this um, for the video real quick. And now I can go to Add Component, go to Physics, and then Mesh Collider. And the Mesh Collider component will use the mesh that you have selected, that you've assigned a Mesh Collider to by default. Without this, just by uh, unchecking Mesh Collider, it disables the component. And if I add a sphere, and give the sphere some physics, make it a rigid body with gravity so it'll fall. If I run this, it'll fall right through the bridge if the railing didn't have a mesh collider either. I have forgot to reset the settings um, before I started another attempt at this recording. I ended the last recording because there was just all kinds of things going wrong, which was a good learning experience for me. Just silly things like uh, normals being inverted on models being brought in. That just wasn't super apparent what was going on. As you can see by my little mistake by not disabling the um, mesh collider, my cylinder has a mesh collider that uses the cylinder, the cylinder mesh. Um, and if I enable that, my sphere will now collide with the railing and kind of just roll along those tracks there. Let's shrink this a bit. Scale it down. Let's scoot this over. And now the sphere just drops right through because the planks don't have a collision mesh. So if we enable the collision mesh on the planks, now we will see that our mesh just our sphere just kind of sits like a bag of rocks let's move this over to make this a little bit more in interesting now you can see that our sphere collides with each individual plank based off the mesh cool stuff normally you wouldn't really in this example i guess it's okay but with a Collision mesh, the goal is to kind of have a simpler mesh than the object you currently have. So if I had like, let's say my bridge had like a stupid number, like 1 billion triangles, that would just be really inefficient to use as a collision mesh because that's one billion triangles that the physics engine would have to deal with. Um, I can't imagine that running very well. The collision mesh is generally much simpler, uses considerably fewer polys, and is just to describe the general shape of the object for the physics engine to be able to uh, collide things with it. 
so right now I'm using the actual mesh themselves as the collision meshes, but let's say for the sake of argument, I want to use a different mesh object as my collision mesh. Let me go ahead and open the bridge in Blender and I'm going to add a plane. No, leave that alone. And let's scale this down. What's the scale button? I forget the scale. Let's just click this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's probably how I inverted my normals by flipping the inside out like that. Whoops. Pull this over. Bring this down. And I'm bringing these um, vertices down so I can better demonstrate the plane being used within Unity as the collision mesh. You can see the origin is up here in kind of a weird spot, and I want the origin of the object to be in the center of our mesh. So I want the origin to be in the center of our plane mesh, like we have it to be the center of the bridge. And I just want to make sure that we are aligned to the center just to make things consistent. Save that and hopefully everything works out. You can see that there's already a wood material there because I had cut the video because I was clearing my throat and getting some of the drinks, so didn't want to have you guys listening on that. Blow your eardrums out. <laughs> so we have our plane, and it's near the bottom. If I play this, you can see that the plane is showing up in our world, which we don't actually want because we're using it as a collision mesh and not actual mesh to be rendered. So we just get rid of the mesh renderer component and the plane disappears. The plane's still there. Um, let's disable the colliders on the planks and the cylinders because we don't need them. Play it and the sphere will drop directly to the bottom of our world because we haven't set the plane to have a collision component or a collider. Now that's set, the sphere would drop and collide with that plane exactly how we want. So let's say I have my plank selected and I I'm like, you know what? I want to use the plane as our collision mesh. Is that the right plane? Yeah, it is. Well, for one, it's not working because things are weird. Here, let me enable that. That would probably help. <laughs> yes, it would help to have the mesh collider enabled for it to work inside of Unity. You can see our plane is centered here at the origin point of the planks and not of where the plane actually is. That's interesting to note. So if you ever have an object selected and try and use a mesh from somewhere else, and you see this happening where your mesh is centered somewhere where it's not supposed to be, this is probably what's happening. This is also useful if you create blend files with your collision mesh separated away from your 
physical mesh in such a way as to keep your scene organized so you can see what's what and like what's going on. But it will be centered over your mesh within Unity and share the same origin point. Let's go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. I'll add, I'll go top down view and I will add a cube because cubes seem to be the popular choice to use. Snap to grid. Come on, computer. All right. we we'll just make like a weird little ramp. Okay. And you can see in our scene here that our mesh is overlapping our bridge. And it looks kind of chaotic. So let's go ahead, uh, snap the origin to geometry. I'll do that. It's good. And I'm going to scoot way out here. Now I have my collision mesh off to the side here, out of the way. You could also use layers, I suppose, if you were more clever with Blender and actually knew what you were doing, unlike myself. But this is the way I'm going to do it right now. Just to prove a point, there's our collision mesh way off over here. Watch as nothing happens. And I have my plank selected right now, and I want to use this ramp over here. So I'll go ahead and select that ramp. And I can see the green outline of what the collision mesh looks like in place. And if I play this, now this collision ramp is being used over here um, in the same origin as those planks, so it actually matches up perfectly. This is drawing, so let's make it so it doesn't draw because it looks ugly. There we go. So next video, I really want to cover characters. I think I should, but I believe I will be covering animation, so bringing in animated models. Um, into the game because my character hopefully will be animated so it makes sense to cover animation before I go on to bring in an animated character right kind of like what I just did with physics so part six animated models thanks for watching and I'll see you next time